Now, as far as disclaimers go, this is a sponsored video by Ugreen, so this is at best going to be a showcase of all of its features, and also I want to explain how a NAS system actually works. Also, if you notice that I changed my shirt, that's because I made a couple of mistakes in this video. And also, I'm on my way to Cine Gear, so we're also going to be talking about this on the way to California. Let's talk about systems. Now, in talking about a RAID system, we are going to use these four terabytes, the 16 total as our example. But what a RAID system is going to be is a redundant array of independent disks. I have four independent disks, and I want to make a redundant array just in case, you know, something fails because stuff happens to good people. So we're going to go into each one of these four common modes. Now, a RAID 0 is kind of just going to be the unsafest one possible, but it's also going to give you the most speed. And essentially what a RAID 0 is that there is no redundancy. You're going to put in all four drives that are four terabyte each, and you're going to have 16 terabytes to work with. The only thing is, is that if one of those drives fail, all of them fail. So if you win as a team, you win as a team. And if you fail as a team, you fail as a team. I made two sports references in this video, but this is going to be a wild one in a little bit. Now, again, RAID 0 is going to give you that speed, and it's also going to give you the full storage base. However, I think the entire point of having a NAS system is also going to be that backup and data security. I shoot on a lot of cameras that are 2K and 4K and 6K. They're all the Ks. And one of the things is that some of those things are for clients, or some of those things are for a DP reel that I might need somewhere in the future. And nothing sucks more than trying to look for a clip that you can't find because you deleted it. And I've done it. So don't do it. Now, the next thing we're going to go with is going to be a RAID 1. Now, RAID 1, essentially, you're going to need two drives, and then the redundancy of the independent disk is going to be one of them. You're going to be able to carbon copy one of the disks onto the other disks. Now, you are going to need two disks in order to do this, and I've also said disk a lot of times, but essentially, if I had two of these four terabyte drives, making it eight in total, when I put that into my RAID system, I'm only going to have four available to me. It's not the fastest in the world. It's also not the most in terms of your memory storage. However, you have a carbon copy of a backup, just in case things go wrong, you can port things right over and things are going to be repaired and ready to go. And then you just take out the bad drive, put in a new one, and Bob's your uncle and Fran's your aunt or whatever the Canadians say. Now, RAID 5 doesn't refer to needing five drives because this only has four drives in it, so don't get confused by the number, by the amount of drives in there. But essentially what it's going to do is it's going to create something called parity. Now, I'm going to make a wild reference here, and it's going to make sense by the end of the time that I mention it. If you remember Lord Voldemort, which I hope a lot of you do from Harry Potter, essentially for him to be able to resurrect, he split his soul amongst seven different places called Horcruxes, and when you collected them all, he was able to become, well, Lord Voldemort again. RAID 5 works exactly the same way, except with hard drives and not different random items in the wizarding world. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to create something called parity. Now, as I set up my 16 terabyte RAID system in RAID 5, I am going to lose 25% of the hard drive space I'm going to have there, and maybe a little bit more if one of my drives is a lot more than the other ones. But essentially what's going to end up happening is as I save files to that RAID system, bits and pieces of it are randomly going to select itself throughout the drive spread equally. So that way, if something goes wrong, the other drives could actually repair the lost or broken drive. So for example, if I'm uploading this video to YouTube, it might be some odd gigabytes, whatever the case might be it'll be equally split up between the four drives in my RAID array, and if one of my drives go down, the other three drives can pick things up. RAID 5 for me is one of my favorites because I still want maximum space, and I do want the speed to be able to work with things if I do want to start editing off of those drives, but at the same time, you do got to sacrifice one of yours, but I mean, that's a small price to pay than losing everything, which you would do if you're using RAID 0. Now, there's also going to be something called a RAID 10. Now, this should just be called a RAID 10, and it'll make sense in a second. Now, we talked about RAID 0, and pretty much you're just going in willy-nilly and you're hoping for the best, which isn't the smartest idea possible. Now, what I will say, though, is RAID 10, basically what it does is it takes an even amount of drives that you have, in this case, it'd be four, and it splits the two up into two separate groups that could act and have the speed of a RAID 0, but at the same time have the redundancy of a RAID 1. That's a little bit confusing, so I'm going to, again, put that top-down example. If I have those four terabyte files, I have 16 terabytes. Essentially, what's going to end up happening is that two of them will pair into, like, a little eight terabyte RAID in itself, and the other two will do the same thing, and then those two become little buddies that go to the bathroom together to make sure the other one is okay. Now, if one of the buddies in the bathroom are not okay, the other one is going to be able to save it. It just means that there's two sets of buddies in the bathroom now making sure each other's okay, and hopefully the buddies on the other one don't attack the first one, which doesn't happen in hard drives, and hope doesn't happen when you go to the bathroom either. 
Ugreen also offers a bunch of different compatibility for a bunch of different HDDs and SSDs as well, and it constantly updates based on the user feedback. I am going to leave a little bit of a screenshot over here to show you what currently exists, but I'll also leave a link in the description to make sure that if you already do have hard drives you have in mind for the DXP4800+, Plus, you can use them and make sure that they work on that NAS system. And so you thought you could escape Uncle Kofi, but he's going to give you the Guyan language of the day. Now, my nephew is talking about memories but he has maybe forgotten to call his uncle on his birthday on April 24th. He did not call him. He did not bring presents. He did not bring me a, a Leica camera. He did not bring me the black magics or anything like that. He, he forgot his uncle. However, if he decides to improve his behavior, if he decides to have a good memory, like this you green tin, I will say, which means he or she has a good memory. So if you want to say someone is good at remembering things like the NAS drive with the array system, you will say, now this NAS drive, this, this tin here, my nephew can store all of the tins when we are in Kumasi, when we are in Accra, when we are eating buff roads, when we are eating jollof, we can share all these photos and we can share all these videos and I can share and I can make sure that I do not lose anything. So back to the video. <laughs> Now, we're going to talk about the DXP4800 now because, well, I still got to talk about that. I promised I would. Now, I only have 16 terabytes that are going to be in the system. Can store 112 terabytes on the DXP4800, which means you get way bigger than four terabyte hard drives, just so we're on the same page, which just for some perspective, and I'm going to get my phone out because I am not the best in math since not being in school since, I don't know, 2017. That's about... 7,600 1.5 gigabyte video clips and about 39 million photos. That is actually more videos than I have on this channel by like 35 times. So if I was to be able to make 501.5 gigabyte videos, uh, I would have a lot of videos, but essentially we're just illustrating that it could hold a lot of information and with some redundancy. Now, as of late, I've been shooting on cameras that have very high resolutions, the Blackmagic Pixis, the Ursa, some of the Lumix offerings as well. And sometimes to even make these videos, I gotta go through the archive of previous videos that I have in order to make sure that I have enough footage to actually complete making these videos. Now, doing this on my older Synology DS418+, Plus, it was a little bit on the slower side because it wasn't that fast. Understand, this is probably a terrible place to put either one of these two, but this is my Synology DS418+, Plus, and this is my DXP4800. Now, my Synology is already set up, but I will make a comment about the speed, whereas my Synology could top out about 226 megabytes a second, this guy is about 1250, which is a lot more than my Synology. One thing I want to keep in mind, as you are transferring speed, your internet connection is going to matter if you're going to go wireless. I would recommend if you want the fastest speed, use an ethernet cable, but this guy is going to be faster than this guy. Now, the Ugreen app does actually have raw support for your photos. Oftentimes, when you're going through a file folder sharing system and you're kind of going through the files, you might not be able to see raw files as you can see your JPEGs. Having raw support makes it a little bit easier, especially it helps you pinpoint which photos you actually need in raw instead of just hoping for the best or remembering file names. The other thing that it does do is it does use AI to sort through different photos. That way, you can actually distinguish people from your pets to different locations and even something called an object recognition as well, which in this example here, I have a car where it found every single photo on my Ugreen drive that has the exact same car in it. It makes it a little bit easier to sort through photos, downloads, and as well as make albums. But the DXP4800 can transfer up to 1250 megabytes a second, which is about a terabyte in about 20 minutes. That took significantly longer when I was doing it on my old Synology drive in order to get data onto the drive itself. And also because I have quite a bit of the one terabyte cards from Angelbird, that means that I could do data transfer on a full card in about 20 minutes, which is just enough for me to watch the latest episode of Fire Force. And leave a comment in the description down below if you're someone that's watching that too. You could use the Ugreen app to actually sync some of the media that you've captured on the day back up into that NAS drive without even having to go home and spend all the time pulling out your cards and uploading information. So for example, if I'm somebody that is on a photo walk or maybe a smaller video job and I have a card reader that can go to an iOS device, I can use that Ugreen app to back it up onto my NAS drive provided that my internet connection is actually pretty solid. And that way I can have a backup on my NAS drive before I even get home and then do a hard backup onto an SSD or something else. Now, again, that timing is going to vary. That speed 
speed is also going to vary because keep in mind you're not on the same network if you're out in the field versus inside of your house but the ability to do that especially with smaller files like photos or short video clips helps out a lot you could also share media from your ugreen drive into a google drive as well sometimes when i'm doing a lot of these videos there's going to be other people that you might see in videos and we all have different footage of each other that we all have to share at the end of the day i can back things up onto my ugreen nas drive and then i could also use it to go onto a google drive as well and that way if i do have to send some footage direct to a client or somebody else that i might be collaborating with it's easy to do that from my ugreen nas drive onto google drive so that way when i need to transfer footage it's a lot less of a headache. Now I wanted to compare the speeds and transferring this directly from my computer to my Google Drive. Now it is gonna say one minute here. It actually took about a minute and 45 seconds in order to get a file transferred over there. Albeit it's not the biggest file in the world. Now when comparing this to my DXP 4800 plus, it's actually going to be quite a bit faster. However, when we're only talking about a minute and 45 seconds versus a minute and 21 seconds. It doesn't really sound a lot when you're talking about small files, but that could be the difference of a couple of hours considering the difference is kind of close to 20% at that point. And also, if something goes wrong in even doing that, my RAID system will just put things back together again and then Lord Voldemort will take over the wizard. I mean, you'll have drives that work. And if you don't wanna use Google Drive, you can just send sharing links from Ugreen direct to people in the first place. So in terms of being able to back footage up in a very hasty fashion, which I like quite a bit, and as well sharing with other people, be it a client or other creators, you can do that directly from this guy which is a lot of fun and also incredibly useful. Now that all to be said, if you're watching this, I'm already at CineGear. You've already probably seen a lot of videos out of me, but I do wanna make sure if you guys do wanna save 15% off on the DXP 4800 Plus, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. Maybe there'll be one on the screen. You could save yourself a little bit of money and also save yourself a lot of potential loss in your footage because you don't have a backup. That being said, a special shout out to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. NAS systems are kinda cool. And also it's probably gonna save me in the long run. See you in the next one. Peace.